the apostle said to the Lord, Increase our faith. The Lord replied, If you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to the mulberry tree, Be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Who among you would say to your slave who has just come in from plowing or tending sheep in the field, Come here at once and take your place at the table? Would you not rather say to him, Prepare supper for me, put on your apron, and serve me while I eat and drink? Later you may eat and drink. Do you thank the slave for doing what was commanded? So you also, when you have done all that you were ordered to do, say, We are worthless slaves. We have done only what we ought to have done. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. And so the one thing 
they came rushing back is, I have terrible test anxiety. Anybody else here have test anxiety? Isn't it horrible? It is absolutely horrible. And so to become a priest, you go through three years of seminary, and then you take these exams that are called um, general ordination exams, and they're equivalent to like bar exams or other boards, whichever way you want to go. And so basically you spend three years of your life, moved away from your family, living on the top of this mountain all by yourself, studying all the time. You spend a hundred thousand dollars on this education, and then you take these five exams, and they make or break your career. Because if you don't pass the five exams, then you walk away with a master's in divinity, but absolutely nothing to do with it, right? So no pressure, even for the best of us. And I was so nervous about these exams that I was asking questions about the preparation for these exams when I was interviewing the seminary before I even started to attend. So my level was high. And so as I was walking into the chapel and all these things, it dawned on me, I reflected back on the morning of the first exam. You have five days of these things. And we walked in, we did morning prayer. We always do morning prayer. But I was not my normal, jovial, fun-spirited, light Nancy. And so a couple of my classmates were going, what's wrong with you? And so I had told a couple of them, you know, I had some really bad test anxiety. And I don't think I'm going to make it to the first exam because I think I'm going to either have a stroke or some kind of cardiac event right here in the middle of the chat. <laughs> I mean, I couldn't breathe. <laughs> it was horrible. It was asking the world. And so after we got done with morning prayer, my classmates stood around me, put their hand on my shoulders, and just simply said, you're enough. You're enough. And at that moment, I wholly felt at peace. I totally knew that I now had hope for the future. These exams were not going to take me down. And so I went and I took the exams, and I, I did all right. I'm still, I mean, I'm here. So I passed them. But it's, it is a point of what we do with our doubts. How do we live with our doubts? Because we all have them. We're humans. And Jesus doesn't look at the disciples and say, oh, don't worry about it. He doesn't say that at all. He doesn't say, you shouldn't be doubting. Boys, don't doubt. He didn't say that. Instead, he said, think about your faith. It only takes this much. It only takes this much to know you are not. If God is going to take your doubt and turn it into hope. If you don't have faith, your doubts become fears. They become fears. But when you take your doubt and you sprinkle just a little bit of God on it, oh, okay. God does some amazing things, doesn't he? He does some amazing, amazing things. All depends on how much holy you have in your lives, how much faith you have to take your doubts, open them up to God, and let Him be blessed. What is the power of the holy in your lives? 